Today, I'm here to talk to you about the FIRE movement. No, this is not the FIRE festival. The FIRE movement, financially independent, retire early. So the whole concept of this is to live as frugal as possible, save as much money as you can early on, so you're able to retire early, right, in your 40s or 50s, as opposed to the normal age, 65 or older, and to just live out the rest of your life exactly how you want to. Not working for 40 years of your life and then getting 20 years off. So I know typically this requires you having a pretty high income, especially when you're young, right out of college or high school, uh, because the more you make, obviously, the easier it is to save. And if you don't make that much to begin with, then it's really going to be hard to save up money and to get that initial capital where the compound interest will start to kick in year over year and give you money for doing nothing. Even if you don't make a ton of money when you're young, there's still a lot of good lessons to be learned from the FIRE movement. The first is saving. Now you don't necessarily have to be super frugal and look at everything you're spending your money on, right? If you're talking about living with the bare necessities and things like Netflix, Spotify go out the window, eating out goes out the window, hanging out with friends, going to restaurants, going to movies, other events goes out the window because you're really trying to save as much as you can. But it is a good lesson to learn to save early and save often and invest early and consistently. And some other lessons I think we can really take from this movement is that personally, I, I find it pretty appealing to be able to retire early on your own terms and have the money to be independent, financially independent, and do what you want with your life. If you love your job, you wanna to work till you're 65, you wanna to work till you're 70, that's great, but there's really no pressure, right? You have the money in the bank. If things don't go well at work, you can just leave. But if you really don't have the savings built up, especially for your retirement, you have to work just to earn a living. And aside from just your career, this also allows you the financial independence to pursue maybe things that don't pay as much, but things that you're really interested in. For example, right, we know a lot of high paying jobs require a lot of time, require time and commitment to the job. It might require long hours or working on the weekends. But if you have the savings to be financially independent, maybe not enough to retire early, but to just do something that you like, maybe it's not as stressful, maybe you don't have to be on call 24 seven, pays a little less, but once again, you have that flexibility to do what you want because you have the savings to back it up. So although this might not be for everyone, there are a lot of great lessons to be learned here. And I hope a lot of people can take this and to translate that into a motivation to start saving and start investing early so you can build up your own money, be independent, and do whatever it is you want with your life. So you wanna be retired in your early 50s uh, maybe on a beach somewhere, you know, sitting on the beach, drinking some beers or a nice pina colada somewhere, Hawaii, wherever it may be. It's all, it all sounds nice, but how exactly do you reach that stage, right? What steps should you be taking now in your 20s or 30s to get to where you want to go in your 40s, 50s, and 60s? So obviously the goal here is to save as much as possible. So I'm gonna take an approach, we're gonna work backwards. Look at where you want to be, when you want to retire, where do you wanna be? Do you want to you know, have a house fully paid for, car? What sort of expenses do you anticipate on having when you are retired? And what kind of lifestyle do you want to live? Because that will determine how much money you need to have saved up. Most of the common estimates and suggestions are around 4%. Say that you should be taking around 4% of your savings uh, every year during retirement. So just working backwards. So think about how much money you want to save up how much money you want to have saved up or you can have saved up. And if you're taking 4% a year, how long will that money last you? Um, it could be higher or lower depending on your lifestyle, so, right? Some other things you wanna consider are your expenses when you're retired. Do you have children or grandchildren that you want to help put through college? 
Do you plan on making any large expenses, taking maybe more expensive vacations, using up that money? And what if you live a little longer than expected? Or let's say you anticipate on going to 80, but you're 95 years old, still going strong. There's no money left in the bank, uh, no family to help you out there. So think about that as well to try to have some little extra saved on the tail end if you do need it. But working backwards now, there's a lot of calculators and graphs on the internet. I'll put up some images right here and also link them down below to help you start thinking about how much you realistically need to start saving now in order to be where you want later. Or some examples, uh, maybe you're 20 years old in college or just graduated out of community college or high school, you have zero in savings, you're earning a median about $40,000 after taxes, and you're really saving aggressively, spending $20,000, saving $20,000 a year. When can you become financially independent? Give you a nice chart based on the investments you have, the expected rate of return on these investments. And one thing I want to take a second here is to discuss that you're really relying on income from your investment. Right? When most people talk about this, they're talking about saving up money, not putting it into a bank because obviously bank savings rates are not going to get you very far. But with safer investments or broad index funds or other funds that have historically generated four to five percent a year returns. Now obviously past performance does not guarantee future results so we're just estimating here in the long run we're expecting about five percent a year and that can also be diversified across bonds and also just holding straight cash. So it is a little risky in that sense that if for some reason the market does tank and we're not able to recover those savings might be at jeopardy. So the other part of that would to be just have more money, either holding cash or safer bank accounts and try to play it safe with your money. So with all these variables assumed, right, we come at a number um, and obviously it's a lot easier to do this when you're making a lot more. Someone straight out of college, maybe working uh, technology, making 150 grand a year. It's a lot easier for someone like that to save money than someone else who maybe graduated from high school, just got a job, a little bit above minimum wage, talking thirty, forty thousand dollars a year. There, it's a lot harder to save because you have those expenses that you absolutely need, right? Food, housing, insurance, you need that. And those necessities cut into a lot of your savings. So moving on now to ways that you can start saving. Obviously, the first one is to open up a retirement account or investment account. Uh, also combined with high interest savings account to diversify a little, but have a place where that money can be kept safely and to grow. And other things are just more general tips on how to save money, even if you're not trying to retire early cutting down on your living expenses, your rents, your mortgage, right? Your food and entertainment budget. Food, obviously we all have to eat, but entertainment is discretionary. Maybe we don't see as many movies or we don't go to as many concerts. Other things in your everyday spending, buying used, looking for deals, doing things yourself as opposed to going out and paying others to do it for you. The DIY project. So hopefully with all of these suggestions you're able to help cut down on your spending and to save more and one other thing is that we talk about saving to the extreme when we're thinking about retiring 20 to 30 years early but one thing you should keep in mind is to live a little right we've heard way too many stories of people that have died way too soon or with the pandemic younger people getting the coronavirus out of nowhere and unfortunately passing away and that's obviously very sad to hear so right don't take your life for granted i right? don't take everything for granted it's okay to splurge a little to take a vacation take some time off because if you are saving this much you're probably not spending a lot of extra money just on treating yourself and doing things 
uh, that you otherwise would do. So find that balance that works for you between saving up for retirement, being financially independent, and also at the same time living your life, taking it day by day and not just living for the future, really taking the moment and have some fun. So another point I wanna make here is that failure is okay. Maybe you really can't cut down on savings or you don't make enough. So you're trying your best to save, but let's say you're in your late 30s, you realize, yeah, there's no way I'm gonna have enough money saved up to retire when I'm 40 in a couple of years. Maybe I have to work five, 10 more years. But guess what? If you've lived the past 15 to 20 years with a savings-oriented mindset, right, saving up money, not spending too much, you fail to retire when you're 50. Well, guess what? You probably have a good chunk of change sitting in your bank account. Failure here isn't necessarily the worst outcome. Right? Hopefully, you don't hate your job and you're not just saving to get out of working. But if you've been taking all these steps for the past 10, 20 years, you're already ahead of the game. Just having a retirement account, you're already ahead of the game. Saving more than 50% of your income, you're already ahead of the game. And if you're into your late 40s already, and your goal was to retire by 50, you're probably already a millionaire at this point. You're going to need a couple million dollars saved up to be able to retire and live off of that money for 20 to 30 years. So the worst case here, have to work a little. Got a ton of money in the bank. Okay, to wrap up my thoughts about the FIRE movement, I know I didn't give a lot of concrete examples with the numbers because this will vary from person to person. Uh, just depending on what your goals are and what you want to get out of this because at the end of the day we all have our own goals and aspirations and this is just a way to get us to think about retirement think about savings but if you want a follow-up video with some more examples or more numbers um, to help visualize and think about things let me know down in the comments I'd be happy to do a part two but to wrap this up, I think it's great that we're thinking about saving and about retirement, right? 65 is just a number. Age is just a number. Who says, who says we have to wait until 65 to stop working? Um, this certainly isn't the case around the world. There's examples, other countries where the retirement age is less than 65 and the fire movement really gives you the individual a chance to take your finances take your life into your own hands right you're not at the mercy of any government programs social security um, pensions that you can only get after a certain age if you've worked hard saved up towards these goals you have the money to do what you want and maybe you still want to work, but maybe that's a different hobby. You want to tutor high school kids or teach a class or you want to go out and explore. Those are all options open to you. Whatever you want to do, you have the money and means to do it. And as, and as I mentioned, failure here isn't really the worst outcome. I think even if you're not able to retire super early, getting in that mindset of saving, having extra money, even if it's not used for an early retirement, having that peace of mind, that emergency money that you know you have if something comes up, or maybe if you were set back because of a disaster or a medical emergency, you had that money there. So one event didn't completely ruin your life. But as I said, live your life, enjoy the little things, save up for retirement, be independent, and go out there and do it. Just start saving up, it's all there is to it. But thanks for watching once again. If you're not subscribed to the channel, be sure to do so. If you like the video, hit that like button. Any comments or other questions, let me know down in the comments section. But thanks for watching, peace out.